cob the duct tape of natural building we say uh, quite often when in doubt just cob it you can plug holes with it you can build houses with it you can um, build ovens with it you can make it high temperature make it low temperature you can make it lightweight so that it insulates you can make it heavy duty so it's good thermal mass mm -hmm. you can make it um, more compressive by adding sand you can make it um, more tensile meaning resisting pulling by um, adding straw there's no ideal cob mix the only ideal when you're mixing cob is or when you're using cob is which handful works best in this place now that's the ideal so I'm gonna start by showing you how I mix cob here with our soil, we've discovered that one part sand and one part soil is about right. So I throw the soil out on the tarp and I look for things that are going to hurt me. Like this rock here. And I throw those out. You'll notice there's a lot of organic matter in here. I used to be one of those guys that would go around feeling all the little pieces of this and that and the other out of my mix. And I just realized, oh, I'm pulling all this organic matter out of the cob and then I'm going to throw the organic matter back in the cob. These roots are stronger than the straw, right? These are going to add more to the walls than this will. And this is substantial. Don't pick them out. Leave them in. So now that I picked out things that might hurt me, I'm going to add the sand. There's a lot of people who will, um, at this point, do a dry mix of this. They'll mix it all around until it's completely homogenized, the sand and the, and the soil. Um, I say soil, not clay. Uh, as a side note, I should say that um, natural, we natural builders have made a big mistake. We write clay in the books, and we say clay in the videos, and it gives everybody the wrong impression. Um, and I'm, we're going to touch on this a lot more later, but it's clay-rich soil, because there's a lot of stuff in it that's not clay, and your best Cobbing soils will fail all of the clay tests, except for one. So, um, I don't do a premix. I don't mix all the stuff dry because I figure that it's another step that I don't need to be doing. Um, there's a lot of steps in all of this. Uh, a lot goes on. Uh, it's a lot of work, and as many steps and things that I can take out the better I'm going to be in the long run because I'm going to make several hundred, maybe a thousand or more of these mixes to build a building. So I'll be at this all day, every day for a month, just mixing. I want to remove steps. I want to make it fast. So I'm going to add as much water as I think that I'm going to need right away, immediately. And then I'm going to flip all the dirt right up on top of the water. If you add water and you have a puddle on top and you try to stomp the water in, you're not going to have any luck at it. You're not going to be able to stomp water into cob. But if you put the water at the bottom and you stomp on it, the water will try to get out of the cob and it'll do a lot of work for you. Hey Robin, let's demonstrate the two two person thing, because that's what everybody will be doing. What you'll notice is that Robin and I are paying attention to each other and working as a team. I'll dance in, 
and I'll dance out and he'll flip it. And if we watch each other, then we can keep it moving pretty well without a lot of breaks in between. here is that I want all the clay balls broken up. I want all the sand to be dirty. I don't want any clean sand. You want to um, stomp all around on a big tall pile. Keep it tall. If it uh, gets spread out and you end up stomping around on a little thin thing, not getting a lot done there. Not moving a lot of mud. But if you're moving a larger part, a lot moving, a lot of work happens for less effort. Mm. Right. So keep it rolling, keep it tall. Double flip it, see what's underneath. Alright. Once you feel like you've got your sand and your soil mixed well, um, fairly homogeneous, big chunks are mostly pretty much broken up. All the sand's dirty, spread it out thin, kind of, all over the tarp. Now this is a place where I differ from everybody else. Everybody else. But what I do next, when I add the straw, I add it all at once, and I don't flip the mix until it's all in. Because I'm trying to add straw incrementally, it gets harder and harder the longer you work it. So I'm trying to feel out the pile and find out how much straws and everything. Try not to make clumps, no hairballs. Need more straw here. More straw there. Now, the reason why people don't do it this way is because if I roll it all over on top of itself right now and start clumping on it, I'll get a hairball in the middle, a big clump of straw, and everything around will just be mud with no straw in it. If you flip the edges in by degrees and work each edge, then you won't be doing much work and you won't be creating a hairball. Well, not nearly as much. Now I can roll it all over together.
can use your heels at this point. Push with your heel, get in there deeper. Especially if you're light, which I'm not. All right, you'll see that um, when it gets about right, when you roll it up, it stays together. It doesn't just flop. It's, uh, when you roll into a ball, it stays. When you pull a handful out, straw and everything, it's um, gritty. Here, catch. <laughs> You didn't come to stay clean, did you? <laughs> Good. All right, make some observations. What do you see? Sticks together pretty well. Sticks. Sticky. <laughs> what else is it? Homogenous. Homogenous? Define your terms. Well mixed? Yeah. What else is it? Keeps it shape. Keeps it shape. Yep. What else? I like the little black Malleable. 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 So you can make a shape. Yeah? What else? It's dirty. Dirty. It's also really sandy. Squeeze it and listen to the sound it makes. All right. Pull it apart and see how many hairs are sticking out. I think this mix is a bit on the wet side. Uh, it could be a little drier than this. We're a little big on the water. Uh, we could totally use this, but when you're stacking up a great big tall wall, it'll, it'll kind of lose it and start kind of sagging. So a little bit drier than this. Um, the straw takes up water, so you want to be a little wetter than the final mix before you add straw because um, the straw will solidify everything. Um, you're building, when you build a cob building, you're basically building a sand castle um, with clay, rich soil as a mortar, and kind of like your rebar. Right? So you want to make sure there's plenty of everything in it. Everything should be covered in mud really well. That's our binder. Hold it together. Should be lots of sand in it because that's what keeps that compressive strength. When you put a great big heavy weight on it, like a roof, it's got to hold that up. You need sand for that. And um, the straw will keep it together so that if there's movement, it stays in one piece. Right? Any questions at this point? How would you get a dryer I would wait, put it out on a tarp and wait. Um, you can add, but it gets harder and harder and harder and you end up in uh, diminishing returns land really quickly. And one of the things that I'll do, I'll insist on is that if your mix is not perfect, I won't ask you to fix it unless it's really bad. But then I'll just say, roll it off the tarp and start a new one and next time do it different. Because this mix, right? This will, if I was to put this on the wall and spread it out, it's going to take up no space whatsoever. Like I said, hundreds of these are going to be required to build a building. All right, maybe a thousand or more, depending on the size of the building. So this is irrelevant. If you have one bad mix, put it on the pile with the rest, man, it's fine. All right, and then start another one, make the next mix better. When you are mixing cob, is this the size that you have a batch? Two buckets of soil and two buckets. That's a batch for me. I recommend if you're feeling like that might be a bit much um, to just go one and one. You can start with one and one. Just make sure your measurement's the same. One and one is the ratio and enough water to do the job. Um, I like to put the water in a bucket. Well, actually you have to put the water in the bucket down here. But you know, like even at home when I have a good hose running, I like to put the water in, uh, the, water in the bucket so that I can kind of get the feel of how much water I'm using once you know how much water you're using, you can put the dirt on, the sand on, and just throw all the water you need in it, and then mix. You don't have to 
add up. Don't do that. Get it all in, mix it up, get it done, start a new mix. That's the name of the game. Get it done, start a new mix.